Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Coming to you live from my basement apartment in Seattle. Yeah. Um, no, it's not, actually. But if you watch some of my videos, I have a Seattle-like apartment in the background, and I like to say that. Today, we are going to be doing tr trade proposals, which I got doing my live stream on the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Uh, you can see it right there. You want to be part of that? You want to be one of the people that put in the trade request and we talked about it or graded players or all the other frolic that we do on there? You just got to hit the sub button. Sub up. And you can be part of it. I give a, I give a, uh, notification out there every morning when I'll be live, usually between uh, 3 and 5 Eastern, uh, five days a week, not doing weekends, but soon, oh, so very soon, hockey season will be starting and I'll be doing, uh, I'll be doing live broadcasts during the games. Oh, then there will be frolic. Actually, there is always frolic. It's just a little extra frolic on those ones. Right? Hockey season's back, yo. It's going to be a blast. Also, the uh, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Go check it out. If you like all four major sports and teams within, you'll like it. You will. Okay, let's look at our first trade request, request, shall we? By the way, this is all done on the fly. I don't do like seven different videos and try to piece it all together. No. One take. Here we go. Pearl of Wisdom dance for y'all. I get your letters. Y'all want the Pearl of Wisdom dance. Okay, let's go. First trade. Palat and Kalorn to the Calgary Flames for Mangio Pani. All right, let's take a look at this, shall we? Uh, interesting trade. Uh, if you were... Mangio Pani is like... Oh, I love Mangio Pani. He's only making $2.4 million this year, but he will have to be re-signed. Uh, put up 32 points in 56 games last year, but just plays with the... It's like almost like getting Coleman back again, which is kind of... You know, they, they got Coleman. Now, I know they love Mangio Pani, and I know Calgary would be loathed. To do this. This was an offer. I, I, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm not saying this is going to work. I'm just going to look at it because it was interesting. Why was it interesting? Now, Tampa Bay fans are like, we're not giving up. You know, Tampa Bay fans may be out there saying, there's no way we're going to give up Kalorn and Palat. Well, are you going to be able to sign them? Uh, Palat is 5.3, and he's going to need a new contract. And uh, he's put up the kind of numbers that deserve a raise, boys and girls. Uh, so, and we all know what Tampa Bay's situation is, <laughs> don't we? They do not have money to be throwing out of players. Um, the next would be Kalorn, who's 4.5 for the next two years. Now, here's the thing about this deal, the first thing I looked at. Both of them have a moderate no trade clause uh, starting July 1st, 2020. 16 team no trade list. So this could be off the table right away. He could give them 16 teams, and Calgary could be one of them, and that'll be it. You're not moving. Uh, Palat uh, has a 20 team no trade list. So it could be over right away. Now, if they can convince both of them to go, and Mangio Pani comes back, you're getting a really good player in Mangio Pani, who does have to be re-signed, but probably won't make more than what one of these players make, somewhere around there, four to four to five, maybe a year, sort of what uh, Coleman got. But in this case, you can remove two players and get one back now you say well that's still i mean that's a lot off our roster the reason why you'd have to give two up and i really had to look at this trade i took a darn good look at it um first of all it would work out that mangio pani who is a 
who also is a left winger, would then move to the left wing in Tampa Bay. That would bolster his, bolster his stats. In which case, Coleman would move down to the left, down here, and a guy, a Kalorn would move up here, uh, and Palat could could be on the right side, and that that looks really good. But the problem here again is, can they re-sign if they're willing to be traded there? Though, I imagine they'd be willing to re-sign there as well. So yeah, it's hard to lose Andrew Mangiapane, but you're talking about guys with cups. A uh, big, strong player in Kalorn who uh, plays tough, goes to that place, Sutter-type hockey, so does Palat. And you fill out your roster a little bit. You know, I don't think you're losing much character in getting those two guys in and putting Mangiapane out. But now Mangiapane back. Now the big thing, maybe maybe Calgary's got to give up a bit of a draft pick or something in this deal at all. Tell me, Calgary fans and Tampa Bay fans, how you like this deal. How much do you love Mangiopani like I do? I mean, I'm strongly considering this because it's Mangiopani. The guy just plays with the flair that says, I'm a winner. You know, and uh, they're, Tampa Bay's going to have to, would actually end up losing Palat next year for nothing, probably. Uh, because they're not likely going to trade them at, at the deadline. Um, Kalorn, they wouldn't lose next year, but may have to lose anyways as well. So it's a very interesting trade. I'm not sure. I have a feeling Tampa Bay is just going to fly with what they got and try to win the third cup and, and go, but they may strongly consider this. They may. They may not be able to get a player of Mangiopani's uh, caliber with just Kalorn. And they're not, you know what I'm saying? So, it, it, especially if you can get a draft pick with it. I find it very interesting. Now, the next problem would be, and this might be what nixes, nixes it right away, is that in doing this trade, Calgary goes over the cap. Mangiopani. Uh, makes 2.4, and between Kalorin and, and uh, Pilat are about 9. Now, it says here that they have 3 million worth of cap room right now. So you gave up two, that's 7. You need to make $4 million up in cap space. That might nix the deal right there. I don't think, I don't see anybody that, you know, unless you included Dubé in the deal and then got a draft pick from Tampa Bay, there's a way to build this. Tell me what you think. Mangiopani and Dubé, for those two players, and instead of Calgary getting a draft pick back, Tampa gives Calgary a draft pick back. Possibly. Tell me what you think of that. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Uh... The next one we have Carolina trades uh, Niederreiter, who has been kind of on the outs. He's a UFA in 2022. So, uh, but and they get back. Niederreiter, Drury, and a second to the San Jose Sharks for Thomas Hurdle. Who also needs a contract. So that it, it makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways because I think San Jose is going to have a difficult time getting too much value for Hurdle. Uh, as far as uh, certainly getting players on their roster. Um, it sounds like Hurdle wants to go. He's like, I'm out of here. I got to go. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm not. Uh, so whatever. Maybe Kane, you know, whatever Kane might have said. I, uh, there was a lot of players that said, I'm not going back. Kane's going to be there. Uh, and they weren't happy with the way that they handled the Evander Kane situation. 
Sounds like Hurdle might have been one of these guys and said, you know, I don't care if he's coming back or not. I don't like the way he handled it. I'm not going to bother sticking around here in case that sort of situation happens again. So it's it, the, the leverage on here is not very good. Uh, Nita Ryder is bounced around. Uh, there's probably reasons for that, but Nita Ryder doesn't seem to complain wherever he goes. So he put up some decent numbers last year. Uh, for the first time in his career, he actually played with some, uh, wait, what is this? Sorry, why am I doing that? Uh, he played with some, uh, consistency, 20 goals and 14 assists in 34 games. Not too shabby. Plus you get Chris, plus you get Drury, who is a good prospect, but Carolina how come when you go look at prospects here, they don't quite often have them? Oh, here we are. Jack Drury. Sorry. Did I say Chris Drury? Sorry, Jack Drury. Jack Drury. Chris Drury played in is the general manager. Never mind. You know. Uh, he's a decent prospect. 40, drafted 44th overall in 2019. Um, put up some decent numbers in the Swedish Elite League last year. Looks like he's probably top end a second liner but a good two-way centerman and san jose really needs um could really use some prospects there for sure they got a very old lineup and uh carolina is chock full of prospects and players coming up if they made this deal drury is really unnecessary in fact it's probably not even fair because he's it's going to take his spot so not bad. And a second round pick. I think that's a lot to get back um, for a guy who could be a rental. I think this deal would have to be kind of contingent on Niederreiter agreeing to a contract. In fact, if he does agree to the contract, this might not even be enough. I think if I'm San Jose, I'm like, okay, we'll do this deal. But if he signs a contract, the second round draft pick turns into a first. Something like that. What do you guys think about that? And then Niederreiter, of course, he has an option to not sign with San Jose. Both in this, this is a good situation though, because both teams can let them talk to each other's agents and have this deal worked out before you go. I don't, I don't mind that deal though. I kind of like it. Um, the next one is a much the same, but we'll go to San Jose. And uh, let's look at the depth chart there for a second. So that would be hurdle gone, and yes, it's going to be rough. You don't really have a second line center anymore. Uh, Nick Benino would become your second line center, but this is but San Jose is a team that's trying with all their might to do sort of a rebuild here. So the first round picks and Drury and stuff like that are going to help a lot. Uh, Niederreiter can play um, on the left or right side. He can take a Vander Kane spot. Really, San Jose is not worried about making the playoffs they're not they get they got to get draft picks in there with their old play with the old players that they have there they're just gonna have to sit there and hope they can hit hard in draft picks in the next couple of years and be relevant in four to five years sorry to tell you carlson and those you guys you guys are very well off and warm in san jose with a lot of money so life isn't too bad but on the ice it's probably not going to be fun for the next little while but we have another one that I think might even be more palatable to San Jose fans. It's Hurdle, again, to the New York Rangers. Um, two players that have been talked about uh, in the trade rumors for a, a, quite a long time. Um, Ryan Strom, who is going to be a UFA again, and I think that the reason why is again their contract negotiations are not working very well for the type of player he is. Now you'll say, well, Hurdle is also going to have to be signed. Yeah, but Hurdle is really a better player than Strom all around. Uh, given the opportunity to have a solid uh, roster, we on, I'll take Hurdle over Strom. Um, and then Gorgiev, who they're probably going to have a difficult time getting value for as a backup goaltender who I think has made it clear that he'd prefer to be traded so he can get a chance to be a number one. 
going to San Jose would give him that opportunity. He can try to beat out Hill uh, and be, he'd probably be quite happy to be there. And that's a big thing for San Jose fans because finding players that might be happy to go to San Jose right now are probably a little difficult to do. It's not looking good for them in the future. But somebody like Gorgiev, it would be good for him because he would get a really good opportunity. Um, and it also says Jones. I don't think that there needs to be another prospect in here. Um, like I said, Hurdle, maybe, again, you would go Strom and Gorgiev, and if Hurdle signs, then you add a pick, something like that. If Hurdle, And I see no reason why Hurdle wouldn't sign with the Rangers. Uh, now, the other thing that's good about this trade is Hurdle can play the wing, because I think the reason why they were looking at trading Strom is they're not fond of him on the wing. Uh, he's more likely, he's a better, he's, he's a good center. Uh, I think Hurdle's a better center, but Hurdle's also even uh, better on the wing. So he can play both. Gives him a huge advantage. Now, you could move Heidel up there with Kreider, and uh, you could put Hurdle on the right side, or you could put Hurdle right where he is right now, or you could play Hurdle on the third line and put Heidel, something of that nature. But you can play them in many different areas where I don't think they're at, the Rangers are as comfortable with playing Strom in different positions. Hence the reason why this deal could be possible. But I, I do really like it for San Jose to get those two kind of pieces. Uh, they would get a center back, which would help. They could He could play be, between Barabanov and just. John Leonard, I suppose, since Evander King's not going to be there. They could sign him again, which I'm sure I think he would be pretty happy to have a second line center spot kind of wrapped up for a few years. Doesn't have anybody breathing down his neck right now to take it. He, I, I could see them working out a deal with Strom there. And, uh, of course, Gorgiev as a backup here. Uh, you could include James Reimer in this deal, too, as well. Because then that he is more of a true backup, and I think he'd be happy to play with the Rangers, have a chance for a cup, and all of those sort of things like that. So um, you could include James Reimer so that the Rangers do have a cup. Okay, now we got one that is a little detailed and a, <laughs> a little in depth. It's a three way trade. So in this deal, and I really had to work this. I, I, it's not exactly worked out the way they did it on my live stream. Now, remember, all you Toronto fans and Pittsburgh fans and everybody that I'll be sending this out to, I, we do this on live streams, on my live stream, every day, five days a week. You can come check it out. Uh, sub yourself up to the channel. I send a notification out and in, in the morning. Usually, almost always, it's between... Uh, three and five Eastern, five days a week, um, and you can uh, you can come do it too. You can talk about these trades. You can look. You can tell me about how we're how I'm an idiot. I don't mind that. I can handle it. I I'm not. It's not a stream where, you know, where uh, it's it, it's got to be all frenzies. If you don't like something, we're hockey here, man. Hockey. All right. It's hockey. In hockey, we say stuff. We put gloves in people's faces, sweaty, gross gloves, and go, ah, and then laugh after. So you can do that on my stream. It's fine. Okay. Raquel and Fowler to Toronto. Pretty interesting, right? Now, I'll, I'll get into that after. The Pens would get Gibson and Riley. All right. Now, tell me Gibson and Pittsburgh would be putting them in content, a little more contender status. Then Anaheim, get this, get this, and it actually kind of makes sense. They get Poulin, who is a, who is a uh, first-round pick of the Pittsburgh Penguins, probably their best uh, prospect. And in this situation, of course, they're throwing all their prospects away again. Lila Grin from Toronto, who is kind of on the cusp of whether he's going to make it or not as a defenseman in the NHL. But uh, Peterson from Pittsburgh. 
So Poulin and Peterson from Pittsburgh, Zucker from Pittsburgh, and DeSmith from Pittsburgh. So the Penguins get Gibson and Riley, and they give up Poulin, Peterson, Zucker, who they don't really need, DeSmith, who they don't need, especially if they sign, if they get uh, um, Gibson. Now, you, people, I know Pittsburgh fans are probably going to say, no, we'll give him Jari, but hey. Uh, and, and two firsts, one from Toronto, one from Pittsburgh, and Kerfoot from Toronto. Kerfoot I threw in there to make it so it fit the cap for Toronto. So let's unpack this trade here. That's a lot of return for Anaheim. Although quality, I'm not so sure, but it may work out. Um, Raquel and Fowler to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay, let's look at this. Raquel. 3 million, 3.7. Fowler, 6 million. Now, this would be the thing, okay? Fowler has like a no trade clause that he can, he can only have, he submits a four tra team trade list, not a no trade. He only, he submits four teams he can be traded to. But here's the thing Cam Fowler is from Windsor, Ontario, he's from Toronto. So there's a good possibility that Cam Fowler might not mind the idea of going to Toronto. Uh, and uh, he makes 6.5 for quite a while. And you're going to say, well, that's a lot, $9 million. Okay, yes, it is a lot. Uh, to, especially considering that Toronto really has no cap space. However, they are going to give up Riley. who is making $5 million this year. So that covers five. And they're giving Kerfoot to Anaheim, who's making $3.5 million a year. And then Lila Grin, who's making the minimum if he plays in, in the NHL. So pretty much covers it. It's only a million. There's ways you can work around a million dollars to stay cap, cap compliant. But... Riley's probably going to cost a lot more than that. You can make a case that Fowler is just about just every bit as good as Riley. Toronto's in a win now mode. Yes, Fowler is older, no doubt about that. But they're in a win now mode. Um, they get a six and a half. I don't think you're going to be able to sign Riley for six and a half for a long term. I I don't look at the money that's been going out there for defensemen right now. Uh, unless he takes a like sweetheart deal. If he goes out on the open market, I bet you he gets about seven and a half to eight. And uh, I, I don't know about you, Toronto fans, but I don't think he's a, I don't think he's much better than Fowler. Uh, plus, he had Raquel, who could slot in Mikhaev's spot with Tavares, or sorry, Nick Ritchie's spot. He usually plays left wing. 25 to 30 goal scorer he has. He struggled in Anaheim, yes, but playing with Tavares, I think he would do a little better. How about you? Right? And yes, yeah, so you're going to have to sign him next year. We'll worry about that later. But right now, this is a team that wants to win now, and this is improving the roster, I would say, quite a bit. Uh, now, for Pittsburgh, they get Riley. Uh, I don't have Pittsburgh up here, but it's all right. You get Riley and you get Gibson. You don't have to look at it. Uh, this is a team that wants to win like right now. Riley will give you more offense, more power play. Uh, you really only have one offensive defenseman in, in, in uh, Pittsburgh right now, and that's Latang. And then, but the big thing in here is you get Gibson. My gosh. Like, okay, uh, now you've got a number one goaltender that can take you places there in Pittsburgh. Uh, even beyond this year, which is even better. Um, 
I think I'm all over that deal if I'm uh, if I'm uh, if Toronto. The problem is, am I all over that deal if I'm Anaheim? You're getting Poulin. It depends how much you like Poulin from Pittsburgh. He hasn't really lit it up all that. It's been okay. He looks like he's going to be about a third-line player uh, if he plays. Lila Grin, the, kid, the guy's got tons of talent, and Anaheim's really good at developing defensemen. He's got tons of talent. If they can get it out of him, he could be a top, at least a 5-6. Uh, Peterson, I don't know what happened to him in Pittsburgh. He was looking really good in, in – uh, didn't wasn't he in Anaheim already? I believe he was. Remind me of that if uh, – tell me if that's the case. But um, so oh, I should just bring up Pittsburgh here. What the heck. But Peterson's already shown himself to be a top four defenseman. Jason Zucker will give you offense. You can flip him for a draft pick. And uh, Casey DeSmith fills the spot. And then you get the two firsts as well. Two first-round draft picks from Pittsburgh and Toronto. And honestly, either one of those teams could crap the bed this year. Uh, there, there, is a, there is a decent chance that the goaltending in, in uh, Toronto lets him down huge. Uh, with Gibson, it's highly unlikely. It would definitely put Pittsburgh in a playoff position, I would think. But this is a really deep draft. So, yeah, she did have Anaheim. He did have him in Anaheim. There. He's, he's been playing a pretty decent four or five defenseman minutes. He's fairly young, and you get the two first. Tell me what you guys think about that, Anaheim fans. Do you like that idea or what? Okay, next, we have a very interesting one, and we're going to stick with Toronto here. Now, this deal came in. Uh, this deal, I actually worked myself. Now, we're going, Toronto fans, we're going to be uh, doing this today on Friday. But actually, I won't have this out, so never mind. But one of the things we're going to be doing, you're going to get this if you're on Facebook or whatever, you'll, you'll be getting this. We're going to be looking at Marner trades on my uh, live stream. In fact, I'll send it out to the Facebook groups and you can come on and do it yourself. The Marner trade is based on the fact that all of this doesn't work out for Toronto this year. They're out of it. Uh, it just becomes painfully obvious that depth is needed and they start looking in another direction. Now, I have a very difficult trade because it's pretty. It's within the division, and it doesn't usually happen too often. But there's going to be a lot more trades in this. But this is a good example. Mar Mitchell Marner to the Detroit Red Wings, who can take this cap hit uh, fairly easily, I believe. Yeah, they've got $18 million in cap space. So... You get Tyler Bertuzzi, who I believe was born in Toronto, Sudbury, Ontario. His father, Mr. Bertuzzi, was in Toronto. Uh, Zadina, Zadina, or Zadina. Some people say Zadina, some people say Zadina. I've heard most of the time it's Zadina, uh, who is, of course, a was a high draft pick. And, yeah, sixth overall in 2018. It's been progressing decent, a little slow, but it looks like he's still going to be a good one. At 21 years old, he put up some decent points last year. Lindstrom, who looks like he's going to be a solid defenseman. Gustav Lindstrom, 22 years old. God knows Toronto could use as much, some, uh, some defense depth there. And the second-round pick. Marner, so you get Bertuzzi for the wing, Zadina for the wing. So you got Bertuzzi, let's look at this, Toronto fans. Let's look at this. Okay, Marner's gone. You got Zadina to play with Matthews and Nylander, all right? Uh, he is, he's going to be a good player. Is he going to be Ma Marner? No. 
No, but he's a darn good player. He certainly could keep up with those guys in the short term and especially in the longer term. Bertuzzi plays with Tavares. Uh, Richie, who, we don't even know how long he's going to stay there. This is the thing is you, there's so many uh, players on the Toronto roster that we don't even know if they're going to be there next year. They're filler players. Bertuzzi signed for two more years at $5 million. He is from Ontario, so re-signing him should not be a problem. And you could throw him, uh, and, and basically you keep your cap. $5 million in cap space in this deal. Or sorry, what's that in the making right now? Maybe not $5 million. Zadon is going to need a contract. Okay, Zadon is going to need a contract next year. But right now, he's only making a million. So you got $4 million to throw around. And uh, you get back Bertuzzi, Zadina, Lindstrom in a second. And what, is, what does Detroit get, Detroit fans? You get Mitch, you get Marner, man. You Marner for 11-something million, a 100-point player. To finally have, oh, Bertuzzi plays right side too, so you can play him on either side. Marner, Larkin, Verana, you finally got a number one line. Just imagine what Larkin can do with with Mitch Marner passing him the puck. It would be beautiful. Uh, you lose Zadina, but you've got Raymond coming up. I mean, prospects for days coming up for, uh, but uh, Bergeron is coming up. Uh, Theodore Niebuch- Niederbacher is looking really good. Um, you got tons, tons, tons of prospects. I think they could fill in that spot <coughs> that Zidana left. And Marner sure fills it in. Tell me what you think about that, Detroit fans. I know with most te- most fans, they, uh, they don't like doing this sort of thing. They're like, no, we want to keep our own players. They like to see their own players and the don't want to take risks, and he makes too much money, and blah, blah, blah. I know one of the things they're going to say is, well, he didn't do well in the playoffs, and he will eventually. Mitch Marner's a freaking beast. He's just, it takes a while to get to get good at playing in the playoffs. Okay, next. We have Buffalo Sabres. And, of course, who are we talking about? Jack Eichel. And I got an interesting one. The first time I heard it, I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. No, 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 that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But it's Kaprizov, Fiala, and a first. And I know as soon as I got Kaprizov out of off my lips, Minnesota fans are probably not even listening right now. They're probably like, no, 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 no. This would be based on Kaprizov not being able to be signed. Right? And then Fiala as well has to be signed. Now, Fiala, if they add, if they put Kaprizov in here, they probably wouldn't have to put Fiala in there. I, I will give you that. Right? Um, but, and we're talking about an Eichel that they know is going to be healthy. Honestly, an Eichel that I know is going to be healthy, if I can sign Kaprizov, I don't make this deal. Plain and simple. But if I if it doesn't look like I can sign both, I would. The question would, would they sign in Buffalo? I think Buffalo would probably go to Kaprizov and say, how much do you want? Uh, I think I'm an $11 million player for $88 million? Done. We, we paid Skinner nine. <laughs> this is a steal. <laughs> what the heck, right? And then Fiala as well. Hook Fial up for big money. Oh, yeah, their cap's going to look bad, but they with that deal, they could almost be relevant sooner than later uh, in the long term. So you'd have to work out. It, it, this would be a case of they weren't going to sign in Minnesota, but they are willing to sign in Buffalo, and that would simply be for financial reasons. Buffalo's like, we'll pay, we'll back up the truck for you, and then he's like, ah. I'll take Eichel at $10 million because my doctors tell me that, tell tell us that he's going to be just fine and back to where he normally was. And I'll find some wingers somewhere else. I, I don't, I, it's, it's something to consider there. If you can't get one or both, if you can't find a number for one or both. I'm hearing though, 
that Kaprizov's going to be signing for nine for five years. And if that's the case, then, of course, this deal doesn't work. You could work out some other way. I still think Fiala would be part of that deal. Um, I also think that that uh, either Eck would be part of that deal or something of that nature, or they just leave Eichel right out of the work work. I haven't heard anything about Minnesota saying yes, deny. I haven't heard Minnesota denying they were looking at Eichel, but... The next one, I think, is a little more realistic, honestly. Um, and somebody came here right under the wire on my live stream and put this one in, and I was like, hmm. And it's, uh, here we go. As you can see, it's the St. Louis Blues. And it's Sanford. Robert Thomas, who's a restricted free agent and needs to be signed. This kid they've been crossing their fingers with for quite some time. He put on 42 points two years ago. Didn't have the greatest season last season, but he's got lots of talent. And he can play center or wing. It seems he does better at wing, though. Um, and Tarasenko. And, I mean... If, if there's a team that could take a risk, maybe it's Buffalo. He basically has said he'll play anywhere except for St. Louis. However, does he want to go to a team that already had medical issues with Eichel? That might be the thing. Like, I don't know. But um, if he's willing to go there, he might be worth the shot. And, of course, a first-round pick. I think they would have to add a little more here. Uh, I think they would probably have to add a, a little more than the first. Uh, and that could be done. Tell me, St. Louis fans or Buffalo fans, who else would you be looking at from St. Louis to make this work? Um, Clem Coaston, who I really thought got picked low in his draft year. Uh, looks like he's going to be third. Maybe Jake Neighbors, somebody like that. Add that into the mix and uh, see how things turn out. Plus, you could also work out a deal where if Tarasenko plays this many games and all that kind of stuff like that. But to get Thomas, Sanford, I love Sanford. I really do. Um, very underrated. A first, and then Tarasenko comes in and rips it up because he's perfectly healthy. Plus, they're two injured players going back and forth. So, interesting. And finally... Uh, let's look at, sorry, I was going to look at what would that give. Got to have fun here, right? What's that going to give? You'd have Eichel. Remember, a healthy Eichel. You could put Shen on the left side. Uh, it could, Perron might be difficult to sign after this. And uh, wait, can Perron play both? Oh, he can play the right side. Oh, yeah, sure. You can put. Uh, Perron down here, Perron here, and Bushnevich down here. Shen in the middle. You got O'Reilly and Shen, wherever you want to do here. Oh, Perron can go up here on the right side, take Tarasenko's spot. And, uh, and you got Eichel to play with either Saad or Bushnevich. I mean, if you're relevant again. I, I think St. Louis is in a difficult spot. They need to take a risk like this before they do a re, before a possible rebuild. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to take a little bit of a risk. I'm hearing the doctor say that he's going to be fine. And for Buffalo, um, Jack Eichel would be gone. And you could try Thomas up the middle. See how that works out. But you got Dylan Cousins there. You could, I think he, he plays better on the wing. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can take Jeff Skinner's spot. Uh, Sanford on the left side uh, would be better than uh, Rasmus Asplund or Anders Bjork. So you've got an upgrade there. Um, I still think there's a lot of offensive upside to Sanford's game if somebody gave him the opportunity. I like him. He's got a good heart and soul guy. And Buffalo needs guys like that. They need to change the energy and the culture in that room. Um, and um, then, of course, if you got Tarasenko, this team's not looking too bad if Tarasenko is a stunner again 
and comes back and plays really well. So I kind of like it. It's not bad. Tell me what you guys think there in St. Louis. Finally, the Edmonton Oilers. And this one's at the deadline. And it's quite simply Phil Kessel. Phil Kessel at the deadline to play with McDavid. Somebody brought that up. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know. But you know what? Phil Kessel can still pot him, man. He's terrible defensively, but the Edmonton Oilers don't seem to care about that. <laughs> I mean, their defense really doesn't have anybody that plays well defensively, except for possibly Evan Bouchard. We'll find out. He's just a kid. Cody Cece did well in Pittsburgh, but he did not do well in Toronto. Uh, he's not bad. I think Cody Cece kind of built up, built his career back up again. Cody Cece could end up being like their best defenseman by the end of this. But anyways, uh, just have him there to score goals all game. Just passing, and he's a great passer too. Uh, but playing with McDavid, just stand there and wait till McDavid passes it to you and shoot. I, I think for if you get him at the deadline for half and, and, and Arizona retains a little bit, although they're loath to do that because they don't have any money, or you can give back Devin Shore or something, or you know something that makes it work financially could be interesting when when they first brought it up i was like ah man you got zach hyman there so zach hyman will play defense for everybody <laughs> but mcdavid and, and kessel and kessel won cups so let's face it it's only one year if he happens to work out maybe sign him for something a little cheaper but interesting concept i'll throw it out to you what do you guys think oilers fans uh, what do you think of that? That is my full 42. That's all I got to give. I'm going to give you a little pearl dance. I got some pearls here that Helen, the, uh, Helen, I haven't did it in a while. She's been, she had a little bit of the COVID, but she's ground up some pearls for you. And uh, I'm going to send them all to the land. These are uh, light blue, gray, and uh, mauve pearls for you, okay? Oh, look at that, all of them. It was getting a little dry out there. Now you got a whole tons of them. Thank you for your letters. Thank you for sending all your letters to uh, Pearls of Wisdom Industries. Uh, we get them every day. Guido goes down to the to mail room and he comes up with the sack of letters and then they pour it all over the letter table and Helen and Hernandez, by the way, sub yourself up. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace right to your door. Hernandez and Melissa will send them to you. And uh, of course, in the Pearlocopter, as you know. Um, and we're getting closer and closer every day. But anyways, the letters. And then we do a little Pearl. We all Pearl dance around it. Melissa, Hernandez. My wife, Caroline, Helen, just like that. And then we pick them out. There's much frolic. We like it. Um, getting closer with the Jetto Frolic so I can go see everyone in the land. And we can go to games together. And I've got, I've got swag coming up. We're going to be able to wear swag that says there will be frolic on it. Can't wait. So much fun. Okay, that's my full 42, boys and girls. Have a great weekend, kid. Bye.